Well, last week we spoke about being full vessels, vessels that are filled. Uh, different kinds of vessels we had here on, on, on the platform. We had broken vessels. We had proud vessels, that vessel that was so proud of myself. Look at me. We had empty vessel, an empty vessel and a full vessel. And we came to realize that even if we're broken, we're constantly to be filled by God. But at the end of the day, God wants us to be full, full of more of Him, full of what He has to give us. And I think that it's important, and uh, last week, while I was even preparing for last week's message, I felt that we'd go in this direction today uh, from the week before. Just in, if God wants us full, what are we supposed to be full of? We're supposed to be full of the right thing. We're not supposed to be full of anything that we like. We're not supposed to be full of the things that we think are going to suit our lifestyle. Or that We're supposed to be full of the right thing. And last week, we ended off by saying that every vessel has a purpose. You and I have a purpose. The vessel is to be used by God. The purpose of the vessel is more about what is inside the vessel than the vessel itself. Yes, God honors us and He cherishes us, but what He puts on the inside is far more valuable than the vessel itself. And so whatever we are pouring out becomes valuable to God and He's able to use it. And so we need to be in that place where we understand that whatever we're carrying, whatever we pour out of ourselves, if it's, if it's in line with God's Word, it becomes so valuable. So again, I left with this question at the end of last week on Sunday. I said, what are you full of? What is pouring out of you? Is it something good or is it something that is not so good? Is it something that is bad? And so today I want to show you that according to God's word, we are able to be filled with the right thing. We don't have to be filled with jealousy and anger or frustration because there's the boom boom going on next door. So God is testing me right now because of the boom boom next door. It's very loud and it's only... Okay, it's not only half past, just as well as I check my watch. <laughs> Angry frustrations, we could be full of that. And when we're full of these things and envy and jealousy and, and all those things, it'll begin to pour out of us. But we can be filled with good things. We can be filled with love. We can be filled with peace and joy. And when those things overflow, we can be filled with giving people another chance. We can be filled with grace. When those things overflow, we truly begin to show the presence of God in our lives. I know there are times in my life where I just don't show it. I'm hangry, I woke up with a headache, or I didn't sleep well, or I didn't get enough sleep. And then those days can be quite difficult. But God wants us to be in a better place every single day. Every single day, because this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I was walking yesterday again, and there were two ladies talking behind me. And she was saying, she was saying to her friend, she said, you know what, this morning I woke up and I said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you know what? I decided nothing is going to get in my way. Nothing is going to irritate me. And you know what? I'm happy so far. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> it was about 11 o'clock in the morning by that time. So I thought, oh, good for you. That's great. This is the day the Lord has made. And we need to be in that place where we're constantly aware of God's presence. Even when something happens, Lord, how do you want me to respond? What do you want me to do? Is your presence full in, full in my life or am I full of the wrong things? Are the wrong things coming out of me because I'm filled up with the wrong things? And so we need to be filled with the right things. So let's find out today what we need to be full of. Please open your Bibles to John chapter 14. We're going to read from verse 15. Here Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he begins this passage by saying, and he's telling them that if they have seen him, Jesus, they have seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen my Father. Because they were saying, yes, please show us the Father. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus came to fulfill the perfect will of God. He came to live the life that God called him to do. And we can almost in essence say, if we're living that life, we can say, what you see in me, you can see Jesus in me. You can see God's plan being fulfilled in my life. But it was at that same time that Jesus said to them, you know what, even though if you've seen me, you've seen my Father, I've got news for you. I'm leaving. I'm going. And I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. I will no longer be here. And so they were pretty upset, but Jesus said this, but there's one thing, I'm going to send a helper. I'm going to leave you with a promise. This promise is going to be with you forever. And this is talking about the presence of God. And so let's read and let's find out what Jesus says when he makes this promise in John chapter 14. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. It's amazing how Jesus says we are to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be spirit full, full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of God. 
I mean, how does this happen to say, Lord, we, look, we seek your presence? How do we say, Jesus, we want more of you? It's because of the promise that he left us, that there is a Holy Spirit who's not just with us, but Jesus said will be in us. To those who love him, to those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit will be in us. We will experience his presence on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. In whatever situation we find ourselves in, we will find that the Holy Spirit and his presence is with us. His presence should fill us up to the point where it is overflowing onto other, others' lives. But this is what happens. We fill ourselves up with the wrong thing, and then there's no space for the Holy Spirit in our lives. There's no space for the presence of God. We come to church in the mornings and we say, Lord, please forgive me of all the things I've done this week. Forgive me for hating that person. Forgive me for speaking about this person. Forgive me for saying things I shouldn't have said and we feel like we're empty and then we fill ourselves up with the presence of God and we leave this place and we're not even around the corner and we're busy swearing at somebody or shouting at somebody or, or doing something that we shouldn't be doing and then that's all empty and we start filling ourselves up with the wrong thing. God wants us to be full of Him, full of His Spirit. His presence will fill us up so that we can empty out. And we are vessels, and the purpose that we have is to be full so we can empty out. I remember when I was a kid, uh, there was this word that used to go around. In fact, one of your kids, Shekinah, that word that, go, that went around. I remember it was a word that when people said it, you almost shuddered. It was, ooh, the Shekinah glory of God. I don't know if any of you remember that. that was it was long ago. Shekinah. People wrote songs about Shekinah glory. They wrote books about Shekinah. Everything was been preaching. It was all about that. And it was incredible. And I always used to think that was something so high up there that it was unattainable. It was something so high up there that you couldn't really reach it. It was for those special moments in church. And that was all. So I had a look at this word Shekinah. And basically the word Shekinah means, and it's a Hebrew word which means to dwell or to stay. This is talking about God's presence, His glory. Do you know that God's presence was designed to stay and to dwell within our lives? If we are vessels, if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then surely we are vessels that need to be filled by Him. And so I've come to realize only after all these years that when we say Shekinah, glory of God, or the Shekinah presence of God, it simply means that God's presence will stay with me, will abide with me, it will dwell with me, as long as I'm accepting God's presence into my life. And so we need to walk in this place where we're constantly full with the Shekinah or with the presence of God. We need to be in a place where we understand that His presence is filling us. We see right throughout the life of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was involved. How often do you welcome the Holy Spirit into a situation in your life? How often do we actually say, Spirit, come and fill me. Spirit, show me what to do. Holy Spirit, show me. God, show me where I need to be. Holy Spirit, lead me. You're a comforter. You're a guide. You're a helper. I know that you can lead me. When last did we actually do that? When last did we ask Him for help? If we look at the birth of Jesus, even before when the angel said to Mary, you'll be of, you, will, you will bear a son, it'll be of the Holy Spirit. When Mary went to visit her aunt Elizabeth and she said she was pregnant, the Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth. That's throughout the, in, in the Bible, even throughout the Old Testament, there are, there, there are uh, occurrences or, or references to the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, over 90 times the Holy Spirit is mentioned. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. And then we read the scripture now. Jesus said, I give you a promise. This Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, this Holy Spirit will be not only upon you, but will be in you. His presence can be in us. So when we go through the next difficult phase of our life or the next difficult stage or the next difficult thing, we need to understand that we can welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into our lives and he will change situations. You know, I've been in places where I have not even understood how I'm going to get out of something. We have prayed, and when you've prayed and you can't pray anymore, we don't know what to do. When you've believed so much, you don't know how to believe anymore, we don't know what to do. We need to rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives because He will bring the answer. He will bring the peace. He will bring what we need. He will fill us up with what we need so that we can begin to pour out. And I know you've been there. You've experienced the presence of God. I'm sure many of you if you're a child of God, you've experienced this, where you just know that God is showing you something and you say, God, you've shown me, but the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God has shown us what He needs to show us. When the situation is impossible and it feels like it's going to overtake us, when we turn to the, the, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, he will bring peace and strength and everything that we need. There's another scripture I'd like to read to you found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. You can follow with me. I'm, I'm still looking at the screen over there, and this has been up for three months now. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. 
Let's read 5 to verse 11. Just follow with me on the screen. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So here again, the Bible is saying there is life and there is death. Letting the flesh control you leads to death. Letting the Spirit control us leads to life. And so we need to be at that point where we're choosing life. God said in His Word in Deuteronomy, I think it is, choose life, do not choose death. Choose blessing, do not choose cursing. So we shouldn't let the sinful nature control our minds, but the Spirit. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. Look at verse 10. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, He will give you life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Here are so many promises. The same Spirit living within us, that same Spirit that is settling, that is abiding within us, will give us this power. The same Spirit will give life to our mortal bodies. In other words, we won't have to live according to the flesh. We will live according to the Spirit, the Spirit of God, not according to the flesh. You see, we can either let, and it's so easy, two choices. We can let our sinful nature control us, or we can let the Spirit of God control us by inviting Him into our lives. And so here is one thing. If you're listening to the boom, boom, next door, it's fine, but listen to this. This is one You can write this down. You can do whatever you want with this. But we are filled with what we are focused on. We are filled with what we focus on. What are you filled with? What have you been been focusing on in your life? Can I have one volunteer? Someone who's not too shy? Someone with a proper shoe on like this kind of a thing? Anybody here? Just one volunteer. Tim, you're coming. Thanks, Tim. I've got a stone for you. It's a, it's a valuable gift. I'm sure one day there's a stone. So look at that stone, stone, right? Does it look like a stone? It's a nice stone. Okay, you can taste it, whatever. You can smell it, you can whatever. You know, it's like, it's your stone. You can, so, so, so that stone is just a thing we walk around and we kick around. So I'm gonna ask you a favor. Would you mind taking your shoe off and putting the stone in? You can sit down, that's fine. Yeah. You weren't complaining about your legs this morning, hey? Oh, okay, sorry. Let's move on. <laughs> um, just walk around with that stone. Now those, those are much better now, wouldn't you say? Why are you limping though? <laughs> Don't you think I've just improved your tackies? No, huh? no. Is it irritating? A little bit sore, niggly. How, how long would you be able to keep that shoe? You'd be irritated. Okay, is it coming off? Are, what are you focused on right now? The pain, oh, the pain. I told you it was too big, Rico. That's <laughs> worried about that. So this is what happens in our lives, and I'm sure you've experienced this. Now, Tim's got this stone in his foot, and it's irritating him. You've had that before, where you're walking, you just want to take your shoe off to get it, and you're like shaking around, and you're like trying to get it to the bottom there so, so no one can see anything, uh, or you see you walking funny, and so it's quite irritating. So we could ask you to sit with it for the rest of the service, but I'm not going to do that. So you're welcome to take it out, take it home, uh, we don't want the stone back. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tim. So notice that Tim had the stone and it was irritating him. He said it was sore. It was bothering him. That's all he could focus on. Like some of you are just focusing on what's happening next door. It's, it's actually annoying me a little bit, I must say, today. But it's fine. We're not going to focus on that. I actually asked him to do it for us just a bit louder today. <laughs> Tim, focus on that. Have you ever been in a situation where you're walking along and all of a sudden you get this niggle on the inside where you just know you have to speak to somebody. God has said, go and pray for that person. He has said, go and tell them I love them. He has said, that person needs to get saved. Now is the time. If you go to them, they've actually 
asking for someone like you to come into their lives. Have you ever had that? And it's just there and it doesn't shake and it doesn't go. And so you ignore it and you walk around and you walk around. I've done that before. And then you pray all sorts of prayers like, Lord, send somebody else. Or Lord, not me. You know how shy I am. Or, or whatever the case may be. And we have this niggle. That is the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. And you know, just like Tim had that stone in his shoe, we can either be focusing on what the Holy Spirit's trying to do in our lives and take us to the next level. And there may be some kind of niggle there because he's trying to get us to do what we need to do. Or we can have our focus on the wrong kinds of things. We can have our focus on what other people are doing. Oh, did you see what he did? Did you see what the pastors did? Did you see what the leaders did? Did you see what that person did? Did you see what this person did? We look at people and we're so focused on their lives that we forget to focus on what God is trying to do in our lives and we fold with the wrong thing. So today, maybe when you go home, you can all put a stone in your shoe and uh, you can walk around a bit and just remember this message because this message is about what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in our lives. Are we focused on Him? Are we being pulled by what He's showing us to do? Are we being drawn towards the presence of God or are we just doing our own thing? Because when we're focused on God, He will have our attention. The, that stone had all of Tim's attention. When we're focused on God, it has all our attention. There will be no place for the flesh. But when we're focused on the flesh, the things we say, the things we allow in. It's strange how then there is no focus or time for God. And so as God's people, as you and I are going to the next level and reaching a different place by the end of this year, we need to be filled with the right kind of thing. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. We need to be filled no matter what anyone else is doing around us. Because when we're filled by God's presence, we will see people come alive. We will see our situation change. We will see something that looked dead come alive again. We will see a problem that there was no answer to. All of a sudden there is an answer because we're looking to God for the answer. We are filled with His presence. So today you might be saying, yes, but I have the Holy Spirit living in me. I'm a child of God. Why is it that I'm constantly focusing on the wrong thing? Well, you've just answered your own question because you're focusing on the wrong thing. I've noticed when I focus on the wrong thing, everything else seems to take a knock in my life. We've got to constantly be focusing on the right thing. We need to be focusing on God and His presence in our lives. And this is the challenge to you this week. Focus on God's presence in your life through everything. No matter what you're going to go through, Focus on His presence. Allow Him to bring the peace and the strength that you need. I really believe that this morning there are some of you, some of us here, we need to enter ourselves with the things that we've filled ourselves up with that are wrong. And we need to begin to fill ourselves with the presence of God. I also believe there are people here who have never experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. You see, when Jesus left, He left us with a helper, a promise of a helper. But not that he would just be with us, but in us. In Acts chapter 2, there is an account where the disciples were waiting in the upper room and the Holy Spirit descended upon them and they were all filled in the Spirit. The evidence was speaking in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. This is a language that we can speak. It's a language that has power. It's a language that fills us up. You know, there are times, like I said, when you just don't know what else to pray, so you begin to pray in the Spirit. You just don't know what else to do and you begin to pray in the Spirit and it builds us up and it takes us to a new level and it takes us to a new place. And so this morning, as I close, I want to read one more scripture to you and I want to ask you this question. Perhaps you are filled with the wrong thing because you have chosen to focus on the wrong thing or perhaps you're not filled with the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is what the Bible says. We can have confidence to be filled with the Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says, is love, joy, peace. When we're filled with the Spirit, there is fruit that comes from that filling. There is fruit that overflows. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live in the Spirit, we will also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. It is so important, church, that if we live in the Spirit, we also walk in the Spirit. We need to walk by the power of the Spirit. We need to understand that even though Jesus is left and He's seated at the right hand of the Father, He has left us the Holy Spirit who will guide us, who will show us the way forward, who will fill our lives. His presence will be a part of us. That is what we seek after here at Grace Place, the presence of God in our lives because it's only His presence that can change us. It's only His presence that can change other people. And so today, 
I want to ask you as you bow your heads and close your eyes, where are you in life? What are you focusing on? Because if it's the wrong thing that's in your shoe, the wrong stone, I want to ask you to take that stone out. If you keep focusing on what other people are doing that are wrong, if you keep focusing on the the hatred that is within you because of what people have done to you, you've got to take that stone out. Stop focusing on that stone. If it's something else, take it out and ask God, fill me, Lord. Fill me with your presence. I don't want to live the same old, same old life. I want to live a different life this year. I want to focus on different things. I want to focus on what you have for me and for my life. I want to focus on your blessing, your promise.